Well, I figured you'd have another box in here by now. We we got one ready to load up. We'll probably have it on there this evening. Cool. So, I've got a couple at uh, we got a couple of carts and stuff, and I think another toolbox ready to pick up right now at a DC. So that's good. Uh, Selling a bunch of them. That's the uh, same screwdriver set that I got. Yeah. Well, I like them too, like that with that handle. I like the comfort grip handle. I like that it's got the non-slip on it. Um, I really like the screwdrivers overall. I mean, we've talked about it before, how they, they're they butterflied into the handle so that they don't, mm -hmm. uh, the handle don't start spinning. And so it's, it's a good overall screwdriver. I like the fact you can see them that color too. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's definitely a high You don't have to worry about leaving one laying underneath the engine bay. You know, we don't, and I don't really have the difference between a really good screwdriver and, and your everyday cheap screwdriver, whether it be from Harbor Freight, Walmart, just wherever. You know, you pay a couple bucks for it. The Phillips mm -hmm. strip out really quick. I don't really warranty a whole lot of Phillips. Yeah. I mean, maybe one out of 20. Most of the time it's the flatheads being mm. used as pry bars or whatever, but, um, and I mean, that's the only reason you're going to warranty a flathead usually because they don't normally break mm -hmm. any other way. But well, there ain't many flatheads on a car nope. anyway. You no. know? <laughs> like, uh, okay, hose clamps, but I mean, I use an eight millimeter. Uh, yeah, you know, and I'm, personally, and I'm going to do or, that too. or try to use a nut driver. Because you know, the guy that invented flatheads is the same guy that invented band aids. <laughs> I, I don't know that that's true, but I, I assume that's where band aids come from. You know? Right. Yeah, um, and I i mean, I sell tools every day, and I do the same thing with flathead screwdrivers, so, I mean, I, I don't, it don't bother me. I know it bothers some people, it don't bother me. I do the same thing, so. I was the world's worst before I actually broke down and bought a uh, brake pad spreader to use flathead screwdriver or whatever I needed to, but, yeah, I mean, I did it too, but. So our new tool this week is actually going to be extensions. Mm -hmm. uh, if you'll remember, uh, if back last year, we had the spring-loaded spark plug socket. Yeah. Um, well, now everybody liked them so well. We've got the spring, the loaded extensions. So same deal. You put your socket on there, whatever size it may need, spring-loaded, so it goes right back to the home position in either direction or any direction, I should say. So, pretty neat. I think that's gonna come in, you know, vital when you start at extreme angles. Yeah. It's gonna give you the capability of being able to do it, one, without a swivel, mm -hmm. um, which is gonna be nice. Um, but also, uh, it's nice that it goes back to the home position so that, you know, I, I've been guilty of myself of, of taping it in a certain spot or something like that on the old ones. Right. That way it would stay straight. So, but it comes in a good little three piece set. I kind of like the case it, it comes in also. It's a pretty good uh, thing. Um, we had a viewer a while back when we was talking about plastic like these, um, talk about putting spray that spray foam, foam in the back. Yeah. I'd probably still do that because it is plastic and it's mm -hmm. gonna do like all the other does over time. It's, it's gonna break, but uh, I like the way it's in that case and it keeps them separated. And just It's just another neat, organized way. Here's the part number. Boy, if they'd have made them locking. I thought about that too. That would be like the perfect thing, cause. Yeah. Well, and I thought. Every time you shove an extension up somewhere and you got it turned at a hard angle, the socket's gonna come off and stay on the bolt yeah. every time. Yeah, I thought about that, which we actually, speaking of that, we had a customer order locking extension. So if you don't have any of those, mm -hmm. we got a customer today that we're dropping these off to. You know, I had you order that set in the lock-in style that y'all have. Yeah. And I never use regular extensions anymore. Yeah, well, that's like these. These are locking. And the reason he wanted this certain set here um, was due to the fact that you can still push the socket on mm -hmm. and, and it stay locked. Some of the locking ones, you can't do that. You can't put it on without pulling the collar down. Right. Uh, he liked the, the fact that you could slide it on and it'd be locked. Mm -hmm. And then the only time you gotta use the collars to get it off. 
but if you don't if you don't have a set of these you're missing out because what happens over time with regular extensions and it happens to all of them um, the either the socket end starts wearing out over time or this will start wearing out and then your socket's falling off and then yeah. you're then you're putting plastic in there or something to try to keep it tight because it, it don't matter where you're at if you're going behind the firewall or in a dash or something with one of those that's when you're going to figure out that your socket keeps falling off and you're going to have to look for your socket absolutely and it's a pain too uh yes <laughs> uh just the other day at a, at a ford dealership they were doing uh, something like that and they had their they had their screw in the socket they didn't have magnetic sockets which that's something else um but they did they had their screw in their socket and they had it on there and they went to go into a tight spot and both of them fell and they never could find the screw uh, and that's another reason i have the magnetic magnetic inserts sockets which inserts are the one yeah. yeah inserts which this is our 38s here but you can see they've got the magnet pretty high up but it's spring loaded mm -hmm. so you put your bolts in there if you have if you have the locking extensions with the either the inserts or the sockets, I mean that's just about an unbeatable duo. Yeah. Because your your screw's not gonna go anywhere, bolt screw, your socket's not going anywhere, and the only the only other thing that I would advise to keep an eye on, because normally, even though it's it's chrome, normally you're still gonna be using a, a little impact or something on it, just make sure the ring stays good and then mm -hmm. you're set to go, right? Well, I know we was doing that motor swap on that S10, and they're in the top two uh, bell housing bolts. So they got a bracket, and it's right in the way. It's just, it's too tight, you know, yeah. between where where they got the tunnel cut out for the transmission tunnel and the firewall, but there's a bracket and then a wiring harness that's up there. It's, it's bad tights, you know, and I had that locking extension on there, and, you know how it is, it's 100 degrees, you're hot, you're ill, yep. you're aggravated. Like I just shoved it up in there and just bent the bracket down with the socket on the end of it, you know, and it never come off. Hey, There's a lot of cussing and fussing and fighting and yelling and screaming, but I finally got it on them bolts. And I yeah. said, man, I ain't taking this socket off there till I get that bolt out. Yeah, but, well, that, that's the thing. Yeah. Um, if you work on cars, it usually, it usually comes to that. Yeah. Uh, at some point and, and now that I can just ride around and sell tools it's, it's fun to walk in shops <laughs> at that point well the preacher uh, man was in there you know and uh, I mean I was, I was doing my normal thing you know done got a little aggravated and he said I was just waiting for that socket to come off I said oh hell no I got a locking <laughs> extension on there I yeah. said if that socket would have come off, I'd have probably flipped this truck over and get it back. That's right. <laughs> I done got to that point. Well, and you know, and, and that's the thing. That's that's one of the reasons that we talk about uh, whether it be these new ones that that are spring loaded here, or the extensions that lock, or even the sockets with magnets in them. You, you do all that to try to make that kind of stuff mm -hmm. easier um, because the engineers are doing nothing to make anything easier for us. Oh no, that that's fellow's what? sitting on a beach in Tahiti with uh, you I know. Mean, the, the cars are just Dragging getting smaller tire. and smaller as far as room to work on stuff. Uh, I think I saw, I mean, Chevrolet has almost continuously gave you more room on most stuff. Mm -hmm. um, whether that be by accident or on purpose, I don't know. But, I mean, you work on some of the Fords or some of the, the Toyotas or just different stuff like that. There is zero room in some of that. Uh, I mean, I mean, look at the FRS. you got to drop the motor down just to do the spark plugs. Mm -hmm. I think they got little blocks to drop them down on, and they don't drop a whole lot, but you still got to go through all that work just to do spark plugs. Yeah. So stuff like this to just make that job easier is, is what I look to push and sell. And, and it's, you know, I was talking about uh, going into the shops when it's to that point. I like doing that, and although I get to get to kind of laugh or smile a little bit about it internally because I've been there, right? Uh, I get to try to show them a new tool mm -hmm. that'll make it easier, and that's that's what makes it to where I can enjoy those moments where I can say, hey. You're having a rough time. Why don't you try this? Well, how's that work? Just, just try it. And then, when they get the job done that they've been doing for 45 minutes, either a because they needed to take a little break and they did that to come out and look at it, or because they got a better tool than what they had. I mean, you see a lot of interesting homemade inventions that they <laughs> yeah, they have yeah. made up to try to make it work. Yeah, but. we actually did a, uh, one of our YouTube videos on the homemade tools that we had to kind of. 
I think we call it like made made modified. Like, That's right. And we've had to cut wrenches and weld them together. It's just just well, all kind of stupid stuff. And that's going to continue to happen, right? Because somebody somewhere, there's no, I don't think there's anybody that can sit back and just think of all these ideas on their own. So it's usually they see somebody do something like that, and then that's where the new bullets come from. Uh, and I did it when I was a tech too. I can't tell you how many times I took a, a Craftsman wrench or something and, and Bennett. cut it and bend it or whatever yeah. I had to do. Um, and I've actually had to do it to a micro wrench before. Um, just because that's all the only wrench I had, and I was getting done with it, like you know. In the oh, when you get to that point, like oh, yeah. you don't care. Oh, like I, you'll take a hammer, beat an impact on it, if it'll get that one bolt out that you're <laughs> tired of messing with. Well, you know, you know and, and especially in a where you're on a commission pay, um, and you, we we shut off on Wednesday evening, and you know you've been messing with that job all day long, and getting that job done depends on okay, I'm gonna have a good check or I'm gonna be. 12 hours short because I can't get this one stupid bolt that yeah. I'm working on for two hours done. So, you know, yeah, I most definitely would cut a wrench, bend it, whatever I had to do, I didn't care. Yeah. Uh, but these things like this just make it a little easier. And with that with that same theory going there, um, air hammers is another thing. I just looked over and seen, if you don't have a good air hammer and you're messing with, you know, you, you get what you pay for. I mean, I've seen yeah. the impacts that, that they sell uh, at like Walmart and stuff, and they usually run somewhere between 60, 80 bucks. That's usually not giving you enough power, and you're sitting there trying and trying and trying. That happened to me last week. You know, a guy was, he had our um, tool that you use with a air hammer to get the crank bolt out, but it just wasn't breaking it loose. So his question was, what do you do when something like this happens? You know, and he was thinking get about- Get a bigger air hammer. Well, he, you know, he his thing was, I've got an air hammer, I've got this, it's still not working, what's next? Bigger impact or what, what do we go to? And he had looked up and, you know, they make the deals that you, it's like a big wrench style deal that you put on there and hit with a hammer. Yeah. And he was like, can you get me one of those? So I actually just took a, a, a bigger air hammer in there. I said, here, just try this one. He said, man, I've been working on it for two and a half hours with this air hammer, it's the second one. It's this brand new, I said, just, just try this one. And I mean, it just a matter of seconds, it was off. So maybe maybe instead of you know automatically going to something else, maybe look into seeing right. you know. But you hear it every day on the tool truck world, you know that whether it be Snap On, Maco, Cornwell, Mac, it's all you know. Oh, it's just overpriced tools. You can get the same thing somewhere else. Yeah, I've heard that. You know, and it's, it's like okay. <laughs> I mean, that's fine, but we're proving that wrong every day. I mean, I'm yeah. sure Joven and and the the Mac Michael is, is running into the same thing every day where it's like, okay, we'll try this one. Mm. Oh, that worked really well. Yeah, here you go. You know, so it that's is what true. it is. But what? Tools that make your life easier, right? Yeah, I'm looking forward to the day where I never have to look at another tool again. Right, well, you know, I enjoy looking at tools. <laughs> um, you know what I'm looking forward to? When I can sit on my porch and do what I want to do, yeah. and I don't even have to leave the house all day. I yeah. got about 20 more years and the government <laughs> says I can finally retire. So. I get bored really easy, so that's probably when I would do it, just for, you know, do something just for fun. But yeah, it's, it's Oh, when I was your age, I used to get bored real easy too. Now it's like, shoot, man, if I could just sit here for half a day <laughs> and then, you know, Maybe yeah. one o'clock, start drinking beer. It'd be a good day. That's right. That's what I'm looking forward to. That's like right. nothing that I have to do. That's it. Nice. Some people don't wait to one o'clock. I know some people. Start well, to... I figure maybe at 65, I'll start at one o'clock. And if I make it to 75, I may bump it down to like 11 o'clock. There you go. Morning. And then morning. if I make it to 85, I think for my feet hit the floor, I'm gonna pop the top on. That's one. right. They're just sitting there ready. Yep. Like open my eyes. Pop a top and then get out of bed. That's it. I think that's, that's going to be my life goal right there. Yeah. If I can make it to 85, I'll drink a beer at 8 o'clock. <laughs> Look at all the time. <coughs> Just start now. Just. Oh, I can't now. Got to make a <laughs> living. Some, Got to pay you somehow. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm in the same boat, so I, I can't do that either. So. All right, guys. Like always, thank you all for watching. Hang out with us on this awesome Saturday morning. So, hey, y'all pretend you're 85 and pop a top right now it's 8 30. that's it enjoy it all right guys y'all have a good one we'll catch you later like always hit that thumbs up
check out our merchandise, cool tools, and discount codes. If you're not subscribed, click that button. Y'all have a great one. See ya.